let's get started. Uh, let me see if I can. Uh... Oh, cool. Awesome. All right. So, hello. Uh, good afternoon. Hi, New York. Um, this uh, I'm Yubo uh, from Parallel Finance. And um, maybe I'll give a little bit of background about myself first, and then going to talk about Parallel Finance. Um, so I have been in crypto space in the last uh, five years, six years, roughly. Um, previously, I am an entrepreneur. I started my career in um, like fintech and education space. So we created a company that helped children to learn financial habits, uh, created software and hardware. Um, and it also connect with mobile payments. After two years of work, that was during sort of my last year in high school. So after two years of work, we uh, made some progress and eventually sold the company to an education uh, chain store. And then I move on uh, to uh, the venture capital space. So I work at a VC fund and um, spent a lot of time in the crypto like uh, space investments and decided to start crypto funds in 2017. That was called A-Decimal Capital while you know, going to school at Stanford at that time. Um, we did a bunch of investments, 30 plus, over the last uh, four years and learned a lot of valuable lessons. Um, one thing that really made me excited is the fact that entrepreneurs are solving problems to create a better solution to make people's life easier and uh, and um, uh, more helpful. So I, I kind of no noticed that invest investment is not the path to go. So we, you know, we started Parallel Finance. Um, at the beginning, we think that this is a huge uh, opportunity for the new generations of blockchain technology to be adopted by hundreds of millions of people. And we think that the first application that, trans that will transform people's uh, life the most will be the finance industry. And the financial industry hasn't been changed for the last hundreds of years. It is largely inefficient, has a lot of problems. And with that, we started Parallel Finance, and we wanted to really sort of rebuild a system where people can access to financial services easily and you know, quickly. Um, the first steps you know, in our idea is that we have to find a market um, to solve. And then we start with the dot ecosystem. Um, I also personally an investor to the you know, Polkadot in early stage and really believe in this technology. Uh, I think it's one of the most amazing tech out there in the space. It uh, has a lot of potential to solve large scale, uh, you know, large scale epic, uh, you know, problems that can enable higher uh, throughputs and higher you know, interoperability demands. Um, so so with, with in roughly in, in 12 months ago, we started to work on parallel finance. And the first set of you know, ideas that we have is to create a one-stop DeFi application. Um, so I'm going to quickly run over some backgrounds. So in the last um, 12 months-ish, we raised over 25 mil from some of the best investors in the world. Um, and we also build a really awesome team. Um, and we also have a lot of institutional uh, clients. Um, so here is the, the, the product that we built. Um, the, like, from the beginning, uh, I think one of the fundamental value that we really, in, really believe in is the, uh, um, the, the, the user experience is always the most important thing that matters. And how can we always make things simple and make people love what they use? And that's the key. We want to have people to stay in the platform because of the experience, because of the services we provide. So we built this one-stop uh, solution where people can perform six to seven different type of financial services within one place, um, starting from uh, the Crowdloan products, which I'm going to introduce in a bit. Um, a lot of projects use Parallel as the platform to um, support a specific auction slot. Um, one of the main drivers is the liquidity that we can provide through something called uh, uh, Crowdloan.c. on our platform. Um, we recently added a new feature that allows um, the Crowdloan derivative holders to unleash additional levels of um, liquidity 
So we call it the liquidation free loan, right? So when people think about lending and borrow, there's always the risk of liquidation. When the collateral value drop below a certain threshold of the loan value, you get liquidated. Um, in the case where people use uh, C dot as the collateral, and by the way, C dot is this uh, zero coupon bond that will be matured at the lease period, right? Um, that will convert into dot itself. So we are able to do that by calculating some specific present value of the C dots by a interest rate. So we, we support both C dot and LP dot and C dot as a collateral. Um, this is how we calculate the LP price. Uh, it could be up and down. However, the actual value of this derivative can be um, calculated through a formula. That's what we did. And then so the user can come into our platform to essentially get access to liquidity right, without any liquidation risks. So let me give you examples of how that could work. Let's say there is a team who wants to secure an uh, auction loan slot, crowd loan slot. Um, and the team doesn't want to start a crowd loan uh, campaign. They may want just to purchase the slot themselves, for example. Then they can go to uh, the parallel crowd loan platform. They support their own um, parachain auction. Supposedly, this team win it, right? Um, they're going to receive a bunch of um, the same amount of same quantity of a C dot. And then what they can do is they can go to our uh, lending market or money markets to borrow the dot that they originally prepared. If they need to hatch the price risk of dot, they can sell it. If they need to do something else, they can also do it. So it, it is actually a pretty easier, uh, it's actually an easier way to introduce, uh, uh, lower the cost for a team to get a, a, a slot uh, for the polka dot. Um, obviously, you can also you know, make the C dot and dot as an LP, and then you borrow. So that's another option. Um, another feature we just launched is the instant unstake feature. Um, so for the audience that use dot staking, you know that there is a 30 day, 28 days technically, um, unstake period. Um, there is no, usually you have to wait for 28 days unless you want to sell through the AMM, selling the staking derivative, for example, selling the S dot on our platform to the market. The issue is that there are slippage, right? Depends on the size that you are trying to sell. Sometimes it could be 20%, 30%, which is not realistic for user. So in order to solve that, we again leverage the lending protocol, the money market that we have on the platform. We charge them a fixed fee, which is roughly around 2 to 3%. And that's about it. You pay that 2 to 3% fixed fee, you get the whole um, staking amount out instantly. So there's no additional slippage, and there's no size limit. You can do as long as it is within the liquidity of the whole lending protocol. Um, so this is a pretty big innovation, and people start to use it. I really like this feature because as a, um, if the users are a large holder, they might want to use this feature because the fees that they are going to pay is only going to be capped at 3% or 2%. However, if you use the AMM to sell the staking derivative, you might incur much larger slicking, um, slippage. But then for smaller users, right, 3% might be a lot. So you might want to use the AMM to sell it directly to, to, to kind of have less slippage in the system. Um, and obviously, there is a lot more advantage by using a liquid staking solution from this validator selection. So far, it's a little bit manual, but in the long term, we want to make it as automated as possible um, to, to uh, optimize for the best uh, staking return right, based on the historical data. Um, we also wanted to improve our insurance model by providing the insurance pool through the reserve capital of the parallel protocol. And then there are some more you know, functions that we will provide, including the margin staking, which is kind of like you are leveraging the interest rate. Um, and then the instant unstake, which is the low slippage for unstake, and then the higher quality for you know, the staking experience. Um, 
this is how we design our uh, backend system. It is also on the, um, um, the Gitbook documentation. So we um, have both on-chain layers. The modules that we, 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 we have a, a module uh, that is written in Rust to provide this liquid staking palettes. We have a lot of you know, functions de de design involved to make it extremely fast. And then we support the XEM v3 uh, and v2 um, to process any you know, staking request. And then our parachain will just you know, process it to help user to nominate into a validator that is currently running. Right? Um, and then the funds will be transferred to relay chain, obviously. And then we calculate the returns, rewards, and a lot of complex application on top. And below that, we also have some option layers to sort of try to you know, understand how much did the user make over time, and so on and so forth. Um, I just mentioned about the crowd loan solution, so I'm probably going to skip it. But just want to mention that this CDOT mechanism enables any team to acquire a slot with lower cost because they can actually use the liquidation free loan to get their original um, um, capital or principal back instantly without liquidation risks. Um, and then regarding this function, this is sort of what we think is pretty helpful um, to help uh, any projects or company to pay salary to manage their treasury, uh, to pay for investors or pay for their crowd loan rewards and so on and so forth. So essentially, it's a streaming protocol. People can use it to um, receive a real time and sort of linear payments uh, with a super simple one-click uh, function. Um, and for the people who notice here is that this new type of uh, treasure management system can also be used or integrated within our uh, money market system. Let's assume that someone receives a payment for the next uh, 30, let's say uh, 12 months. And assuming that this payment won't stop, there's no way that it can um, be terminated. Then this payment um, receipt can be a really awesome collateral to borrow money if you need to have future income to, re to be received today right, through the money market that we create. Um, and also for DAOs and for like, uh, companies right, or for like, a team, Sometimes it's important to get access to um, time-based uh, financial products. For example, here, the entire concept of treasure management is based on the concept of time. So you can pay someone over a period of time, or you can uh, receive something within a period of time. And we also have a bunch of um, system involved. Um, I think that is not the right one. I'm going to seek this. So, OK. So lastly, I want to talk about the crowd on stuff. Um, this 68 million dot, this is not the actual dot in our system. It's just the TVLs that we have. And then we divide it by the dot price today. Um, so far, the most popular product is still the liquid staking solution. And then we have the staking. Uh, sorry, so far, it's the most. Uh, you know, like a uh, good solution so far that people use the most is the liquid crowdfunding solution. And then we have other you know, apps that people are using. And so if you look at a uh, DeFi Lama's data, we're roughly number 11. But I think what really matters is how many on-chain users are using the platform and how many people are benefit through this um, ecosystem that we're building. That is what matters the most. Um, and I want to talk about timeline a little bit more. So. We spend one year to launch most of the DeFi derivative, or we spend like half a year technically after the product launch. Um, we got some levels of traction. I think there's still a lot of space to grow. And in the dot ecosystem, at least, um, most of the, I think, applications are still in the sort of, sort of the spot markets or linear return type of uh, products. Um, what are some things that are missing right, in the DeFi space? I think one direction that is absolutely missing is 
the um, complex financial derivative supports. Um, it's more complicated to design and build. We want to take our time um, from you know, options to futures, and we are open to work with other teams as well to make sure that this derivative platform could be a reality, that people can use it and uh, get exposure or hedge their um, existing portfolio. So one thing to add on, which is interesting, is that our system is completely run on top of a thought-based um, um, monitor system. Everything is about you know, the units of thought. You're making more thoughts. I think it would be incredibly helpful to introduce more stablecoin supports um, from AUSD to USDC, USDT to, to be honest, any stablecoins. Uh, our goal is to use the cross-chain communication channel to integrate with them in directly, directly and to allow the users on our platform to get access to any type of stable coins they wanted to get access and to be able to, um, to have much flexible uh, DeFi experience on a system. That basically means that we, we have to support cross-chain, right? Because we're not a stablecoin minter. We want to support other stablecoin to come to our platform so that people can use. Um, and we're talking to a lot of stablecoin issuers to make them on board. Eventually, um, I'm not sure about smart contract platform yet because technically we're the only parachain, one of the only parachain that does not have any smart contract capability. Um, thanks to the Substrate framework, it's relatively simple to support the basic um, functionalities of an EVM platform. And obviously, you can build more complex Wazan type of smart contract platform. I think in the very long term, we could be very interested to support a smart contract platform. Um, we're, we're still in discussion of what does it mean and how much uh, efforts we want to put. But so far, we are you know, incredibly focused on the basic product groups that the users want us to use. Right? Um, so that looked like you know, a, a short-term, one to two years time frame for us. And then on the existing timeline, we launched six to seven different products. I think we also wanted to sort of fix you know, um, and improve on the existing um, offers. One of them is the AMM and swap. I noticed that the volume is has, again, has a lot of space to grow. Um, part of the reason is stablecoin support, and part of the reason is that we do really need to provide more type of asset on the platform so people can trade and get exposure. So those are the stuff that we are also going to maintain and improve. Um, so that's about it. That's all of the, the major points that I wanted to cover. Um, there's one thing I want to say is, um, so Parallel Team also launched a new uh, set of uh, branding and protocol that is uh, outside the uh, DOT ecosystem. Um, and one of them is on the ETH ecosystem. So the goal for us is to, in the end, create a, um, a platform where anyone can ask us to DeFi services or financial services within um, one set of um, entrance. It could be on your phone through layer two, or it could be on the web app. Um, and then all of the apps that we build, or all of the protocols we build, no matter parallel or the new protocol, we call it Omni protocol, will be connected through one set of entrance. And so it's going to be easier for um, the user to get access. And eventually, we want to bring this um, new set of um, blockchain revolution to a mass adoption to over a billion people as soon as we can. So yeah, thank you, everyone, for uh, listening. Thanks.